Hey everybody, this is Billy Blecka. I'm going to do a quick rundown of Extra Jimmies uh, by the Fabulous Thunderbirds. It was written by Jimmy Vaughn and the late great Keith Ferguson, iconic Texas blues bassist. And uh, it comes from this album, What's the Word? I think it's 1982. And that's Keith Ferguson right there, playing lefty, tearing it up. So it's an instrumental in the key of B. And the approach is based on organ bass lines. Just chromatic, walking, straight quarter notes, and just flowing, grooving straight ahead. When you're playing um, organ bass lines, you don't use any muted notes, or certainly not many. You want a continuous flow, a very connected groove, you know, the notes just pumping straight ahead, especially in a trio format. You start adding a lot of accents and eighth notes and triplets, kind of trips things up. So you just want to stay powerful and straight ahead with it. Maybe think of like a, a 49 Mercury low rider, big grill, pedal to the metal, coming right at you. And in this type of stuff, you know, Texas blues bass uh, playing and just Texas blues, you know, Thunderbirds and Stevie Ray and ZZ Top and so many great artists came out of Texas, T-Bone Walker. Um, Lightning Hopkins, Albert Collins, so on, Johnny Copeland. You need to dig in, too, when you play. Like, a light attack doesn't really capture the vibe. You gotta, you gotta pull the strings. You know, almost like a bar fight's gonna break out. You gotta, you gotta go after it. So I'll play two choruses. I do have the entire video on my channel. And it's just the neck, and you can see the complete tune played up to speed. And the reason I'm doing just a short instructional is because I've gotten quite a few messages, uh, emails, asking for uh, notes and tab for it, which uh, I just did. And it's available on my website, the notes with the tab. If you go to Bass Dog Music Company, BassDogMusicCo.com, Free download if you want to have it. So I'll play like two choruses, which sums up the, the tune in general. And I'm going to play it a little bit slower so you get a look at it. Okay, one, two, three, four. the first two choruses. Up to speed it's more like that's about the tempo of the tune. So of course we learn blues mainly by ear but you know, if you want to read bass clef, it's a great idea. It's one of the best things I ever did was learn how to read. And, you know, getting the Standing in the Shadows of Motown book, the Jameson book, 
I wanted to be able to read through that whole thing. Plus all the great bass lines by Ray Brown and you know, uh, so many players we, we really emulate, they don't read. And so many that we, we love and learn from, they do read. And the list is long. So if you learn by ear, in blues especially, and then you go back and read the notes, you can already play them. You already know where the notes are in the instrument, hopefully. You've learned all your notes. And you, and you start reading, and you look at those little black dots, and it's not so intimidating. And you're like, all right, I can do this. And walking bass lines, that, that's the best way to do it. Or at least one of them. Bach, blues, same kind of lines, right? Bach. Right? Chords over there. Well, it's just the arpeggio, right? Same stuff. So the vibe of this tune, uh, Extra Jimmies, from What's the Word? You know, I hear a lot of sort of B.B. King from the 50s. And Jimmy Vaughn's playing a lot of riffs there and just has that same that same great drive, you know. Um, once again, you don't fool around too much. You just got to lay this stuff down and dig in. So go over to my website, Bass Dog Music Company, BassDogMusicCo.com. And while you're there talking about reading music, you know, in blues, like I said, we, we learn by ear. But. In 1912, W.C. Handy published the Memphis Blues. First tune to really be published in the blues form, and it brought the blues to such a, a bigger, wider audience everywhere in St. Louis Blues. So W.C. Handy, the father of the blues. There's one tune that was published before the Memphis Blues, and it's called the Dallas Blues. And it was just a little short while before he published the Memphis Blues. But the Dallas Blues was... From what I understand, just a piano uh, instrumental, or a piano instrumental, not just, but a piano instrumental. And so, and reading in the blues tradition started as soon as they started recording music and publishing sheet music in a blues form. It was there right at the onset. So I encourage reading music. And while you're at my website, see, here's this album. It's called... Louis Armstrong plays W.C. Handy. This is, oh, sorry, W.C. This is widely known as Armstrong's best album of the 1950s. And it's great. It is great. Check it out if you haven't heard of it. So the book, you'll notice at my website there's a book. Bass transcriptions from Louis Armstrong plays W.C. Handy. Note for note, transcriptions of Arvel Shaw, the magnificent bassist Arvel Shaw. And it's the complete album. Just notation, walking bass lines. It's blues, man, just based on the major scale. So if you're into trying to read music over straight blues changes and learn how to read music and learn the fingerboard better and, you know, get some better uh, music speak going and being able to access other information like the Jameson book and open it up and feel confident. This is an amazing book. It's the whole album, Walking Bass Lines. So check it out. And the full tune again for Extra Jimmies by the Thunderbirds, it's on my channel. It's just like, a, it's a dark video. Just my basement in the back and just, just the uh, my P bass. And it's just the neck and you get a complete look at the tune. All right, check it out. Have a great day. Take care.